Okay, we're now in the school of Sviris Omer, and Sviris Omer is an interesting mitzvah. Uh-huh. Um, when we look at Sviris Omer, what are we doing every day? We're counting days. We're counting days. So what's the, what's the omic? What's the deeper meaning of Sviris Omer? And I want to suggest something as follows. I saw last week in a book that something called Parkinson's Law. Adam, you know about Parkinson's Law? Exactly. Parkinson's Law? I don't remember. you're familiar with Parkinson's Law? Law? Yeah, Parkinson's Law. Anyway, I don't think it's connected with the disease Parkinson's, trans disease, but Parkinson's Law is follows, right? And I'll bring it out with a uh, incident this book brings about an office with three secretaries. And one afternoon, they had to make, they each had to make 50 phone calls, 150 phone calls. And the boss comes in and asks them, do you think you'll be able to finish the workload for today? He said, it's a lot of calls. I don't think uh, we'll be able to do it right, by 5 o'clock. He said, well, that's too bad because I was thinking that you finish by 2 o'clock. I'm going to let you go home. They said, we could do it. And they're all done by 2 o'clock. So Parkinson said as follows. He said that the, the amount of time that something takes to do is the amount of time allotted. Right? If you allot an hour for something, yeah. it'll take an hour. If you allot five minutes for something, take five minutes. Now, of course, it depends what you're doing. Right? If you want to finish Shas in an hour, right, it's not going to work because there's just too many pages. Even if you would turn the pages like they count those uh, dollar bills in the machine, right, which some people do that, but still, you know, it's not going to work. But Rebbe Kiva Eger um had a Seder before he went to sleep. He would unwind. You know? A lot of people, before they go to sleep, to relax. You know, I know one of Rebbe Brothers tell me to me, he used to like, look at a Musa Sefer before I went to sleep, and Rebbe Yosef would learn Ein Yaakov before I went to sleep. Um, uh, some people read the newspaper. Rebbe Kiva Eger would unwind with a hundred blot of Gemara. He would learn a hundred blot of Gemara. And that's when he, you see on the side of the Gemara, the Gilean Ashas, so that was because uh, when he went before I went to sleep, he learned a hundred blots. So he finished Shas every month. It's not such a big deal to um, to write the Gilean of Shas if you're learning Shas every single month. Rabbi Yashiv Agav, I think, finished four times a year. Four t- Rabbi Yashiv finished Shas every three months. Right? So a little bit slower than Rabbi Kivayer, but still. So this, I think, Lamaisa is part part of the avoda of Sefiris Omer that. To count, the time counts, and it's really important. And uh, we should really use our time to the best of our ability. I want to tell you a story that happened to me with Rav Don Segel and Brazil Orbach. One time I was like really maxed out, you know, maxed out, I said. felt a little pleasured. And so I went to Rev Israel and Rev Don Segel, and I said, you know, I think I'm doing too much. So you know what they told me? What? Do <laughs> If you think you're doing much, that's really good. Yeah, so you should do even more. Because that means that you have a lot of potential to do a lot of things. And this is actually something that um, this is something that it's known in business is the best person to give something to do is somebody who's like doing a lot. Because he realizes that every minute is very, very precious. And therefore um, he uses every minute to the, to the maximum capacity. And I think this is really part of Spirit's Homer. So I wanna the question is how do you get to this? Like very nice. I was talking to somebody um, last week and giving them like a very inspiring um, schmooze about doing some project together. And they said, okay, very nice. But like, how do we do this? How do we come to this recognition? So I want to share with you a very interesting um, shot here in a medrash. It's a famous medrash in, in uh, Chai Sara, Parsha Nun Ches, med, uh, Medrash Gimel. Very famous medrash there. It's talking about Rabbi Kiva. You know, and part of Sphere's Omer now, we're, we're mourning Rabbi Kiva's Talmidim. And I'm sure Rabbi Kiva's base manager is very stark. Base manager, you know, like, I have no doubt about that. But one time, he was giving a shear and people were falling asleep. You know, when I, my, when I first started shear, I was going to Rabbi Beit Shemesh every week, from the Bay Yaakov to Rabbi Beit Shemesh, really. And I was giving shear in the Grosh Hall, even before a cornfield got there. And sometimes they had 10 people would come. But sometimes there was only one person there. Yeah. And that one person there was very tired and would fall asleep. So I was traveling two hours to Rabbi Chemish to give a shear to one person who was asleep. You know, so that's, it could be a little bit frustrating. But, but I'm sure Rabbi Kiva, Eger also, Rabbi Kiva I'm sorry, also uh, experienced that. And he was giving shear and his tummy to fall asleep. So he, he wanted to wake them up. So he told them a board. He said like this. He said, how was it 
that Esther Malka was queen over 127 provinces, yeah, because she was a descendant of, of Sari Menu, who lived for 127 years. Right? Now, what's the question on this? Oh, very good. Very good. One second. Uh, 50 shekels. I only have $100. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I can write it. It says God on it. Though. Okay, in any event, uh, uh, I'll, I'll paraphrase what Gabriel said in Hebrew. Makesh. Right? Makesh. That's how you say it in, in colloquial Hebrew. So, what's the Kesha between 127 years and 127 provinces? So, I saw in the Sefer Shalmi Todi, he's one of the Haintegra Achronim, and um, he writes on in the Sefer. What? Well, all of a sudden, so. That's another cash. This is the cash that I was looking for. So we have to give him the money. He gets the cash. Um, so the thing is like this. He says, explains a very nice shot. And this is like very pertinent to somebody who's interested in buying real estate for 4 million shekels as hoping to purchase a little bit of apartment down there. We'll speak about that more afterwards to make a base medrash. 4 million shekels. So 4 million shekels. How does that come out of room? I think it's officially a four-room apartment, right? Four-room, it's called it. Three-bed, four-room. For them, so that's a million shekels a room. It's pretty particular with Scabin. They don't count the salon. Well, they actually do count the salon, right? Three bedrooms and one salon. It's four a million shekels a room. But he says like this to Shami, Shami Tode. He says, if it's 127 countries in 127 years, so let's break it down. Countries have cities. Cities have communities. Communities have streets. Streets have houses or apartment buildings. And apartment buildings have houses. And houses have rooms, right? So we divide it down to the smallest possible unit as rooms. Same thing with 127 years, right? Years have months, months have weeks, weeks have days, days have minutes, minutes have hours, hours have, uh, sorry, hours have minutes, minutes have seconds. Right? So if you, if you break down the calculation approximately, right, it'll be one second for one room. If you take all the countries in the world and you divide it up into, sec into rooms, yeah, and you would take all the time, you take 127 years and divide in seconds, approximately comes out to one second for one room. You can do the math if you want, right? So one room, that's a million shekels. <laughs> At least if you're on the whole from Shneiro to Shkol, right? So that's the idea. The idea is that one second is really important. One second is a really important amount of time, yeah? And um, Lamaisa, in Kalm Yeshiva, they used to have a special Seder in Kalm, right? When they finished Seder, they would all leave, go, I don't know, somewhere else. They would come back, Right? Come back to the base medrash, learn for five minutes, and then go back again. Right? So let's say Seder ended at seven, right? They would seven o'clock, they would, I don't know, go back to the you know the dorm or whatever, seven o five, and they would come back at seven oh five, yeah, come back in, go for five minutes, and then go back to supper. Right? And during these five minutes, they finish the sechtas. Yeah. And the point of that Seder was to teach you the five minutes is an important amount of time. Right? And in fact they asked the Khasim Sofa once. You know, the Chasim Sofa was incredible. He wrote Shaiz and Chuvas. He wrote Perish and Shas, Perish and Chumash. Yeah? Uh, we missed something? Oh, he wrote songs. You know? He wrote, he wrote, um, Shir, songs. And they asked his son, the Ksav Sofa, like, how do you have time to write songs? He said it was between the days between, uh, Yom Kippur and Sukkot. Like, he was just in such a level of spiritual ecstasy that he wrote songs. He was close. Anyway, so they asked the Chasim Sofa, like, how do you do it? So many things. How do you do that? He said, five minutes. Five minutes. Which five minutes? Yeah, the five minutes that people waste, I used. And that was the concept of time. They asked um, a certain Adam Gadol once. I don't know if I need to say his name. You probably figure out. Like, he, was, he had a doctorate in, in philosophy. right? And they said, like, where did you have time to get a doctorate in philosophy? He said, well, everyone else was speaking Lashon Hara about me. I was doing my doctorate in philosophy. And I personally know his um, Kavusa. I know they were learning 12 hours a day. Well, that when he was getting his doctorate. He also was um, a big a big masman there, person himself. In any event, this is a big this is an idea of Sirius Omer. Counting days comes to teach us like what time and how valuable time is. Right? So you know once you hear that, so then now we're ready. Five you know and if anybody comes to me while I'm learning, I'm gonna like I'm learning time, five minutes. It's really important. Right? That's the right right reaction. Yeah? Okay. Um, maybe, but it's a, t it's a difficult shikul. That was, I wasn't looking for that answer. I'm not going to charge you 50 shekels. But 
really the answer I was looking for yeah, is that to have a very, very great shivas of time, but that doesn't have to affect, or shouldn't, in fact, just the opposite. It shouldn't give you a negative attitude towards dealing with other people. I want to give you two examples, yeah, personal examples that I experienced myself. Yeah. One was with Shomel Zaman Orbach. Shomel Zaman Orbach, I used to go speak to him in um, Shari Chesed, either in his house, or sometimes I used to catch him in Shul, in, in Maile Satera, Maile Satera, before, um, before Mincha. If he'd be sitting there saying tell him, and I would go to speak to him. Um, of course, you're not supposed to, but whatever. No, like very important things you're allowed to go speak to him. Then. So he had a minag. Shomel Zaman Orbach had a minag every Friday, Minug. He, every Friday, Shlomo Zalman Aruch would go to the Makolit to buy a, um, a bottle of grape juice. You know, and I was walking last week with David Cohen, right? And he went into the Makolit, bought a thing of milk. You know, it's interesting to watch Kedalim, you know, go into the Makolit and buy milk. I like to learn a lot from from my, my Sarah. In any event, um, so someone asked Shlomo Zalman Aruch, I don't understand. You, you live in Shari Chesed. You have to go here. You have to go there. You have to go in. Take the thing. Bye. It's 20 minutes. Right? I'll do it for you. You'll have 20 minutes extra to learn. Right? It's a good kasha, no? Good kasha? Good kasha. Good kasha. Yeah, what do you say? Okay. Gabriel's saying good. It's much like other people, maybe. Right? But Lamaisa, people would probably love. They'd probably pay money to buy Rav Shalom Zalman and Orbach grape juice every week. They would pay for themselves. They would go in. Like, what is what? You know? I know, this is a little bit of a trick, but um, if you want to make a Kesha with certain Rabbanim, it's Kedai to do them favors. You know? If you can. And I know Rav Safani had some plumbing problems, so I helped him out. His, his neighbor didn't speak English. It creates a certain Kesha and bond, which is very, very good. I know I did it once to one Rav, it was Rav C. Weber. And like, he forced me to take the money afterwards because he didn't want to be, he didn't want to feel like uh, indebted, especially to me. But, <laughs> The point is, is that Roshal Zaman Arbach said, you don't understand. You didn't get it. The woman who owns this Makolin is an Almana. Yeah? And she looks forward the entire week for that five minutes they walk in on Friday. I'm not going to take that away. What a beautiful concept that we can learn from Roshal Zaman Arbach. I'll tell you another story which I witnessed personally with the Roshal Eri, really. You know? Roshal Eri is, pro- is quite a busy person. Quite a busy person. Right? But there was a family in this neighborhood who we know very, very well. She was a boss biased by us. Um, she married a, a Khashva person whose last name was Ariely. Unfortunately, um, he was nifter quite young. They had quite a number of children. And during the Shiva, who walks in? Who walks in? Rosh Ariely. Yeah. Now, he wasn't really related to them. The Ariely. Ari- Ari- it's a pretty uh, famous name, apparently. And he says to the oldest uh, boy, who was 12, oh. he said, we are mishpacha. From now on, you know, Usher Eli and, and who's the, I don't know, remember the name of son, we're mishpacha. He invited him to the mirror for Yom Neroyim, and he sat right next to him. And all the covet of Usher got, he got covet as well. And I know it, we, were, we were together with them for um, a Shabbos meal at my daughter's house. And I said, you know, maybe you can get me in with Rav Usher. He said, well, you know, I'll try. <laughs> I can't get everybody in, but... And like he made this kid feel so kosher. So from those I two, I can't even know with him. Yeah. on Fridays. Yeah, probably that's him. Yeah. Anyway, the kid, sir. The thing is like this: Rav Chaim Ozer was once with a certain rov. I heard this from Sternberg, and he said, "No, what's the job of a rov?" Shmuel, Rabbi Goodman, what do you say? What's the job of a rov? Sorry for putting you on the spot. Yeah. Speak loud, and I'll repeat what you say. A few things. Give incorrect answers. Give incorrect answers. Torah. What else? Make me feel good. Okay, pretty good. That's pretty close. So the 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 Rav, Rav Chaim Moser asked. He said Kashris, Mikvos, Shabbos, Ervin, and so Rav Chaim Moser asked him again. He said Kashris, Shabbos, Ervin. He asked him another time. After three times, he says Iker Chaser min a Sefer. Yeah, a Rav has to be doig and Yisomen Almanus. Yeah, and I know uh, of Kornfeld, I know other like this is a big. This is like top priority. Rav Yitzchak Berkowitz, I know you get maybe a three minute if you pay money for the show. You get a three minute. I used to get like two appointments, six minutes joining together, right? But for Yisomin Almanus, he has lots of time. 
Right? Stop the person is right. This is Rav Chaim Moses said. This is you have to know your priorities and widows and orphans. You sell them on us. That's a priority. Yeah. And Lamaisa, it's really a before Oh, so you're going to lose out. The person spending so much time with you, so many almanas. What about Teira? What about Simon Kov Hay? Um, Bishol? What about Dalad Minim? Yeah? What, what's, what, what's going to be with that? So there's an incredible Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, Yeah? The Gemara says like this. Rav of Abayim in the base Eli, they were both from base Eli. Base Eli, they died very young. I think they, they were officially died at 20. 40. 20. 20. Right? So Rab and, Ab- um, and Abai were both. Yeah. Rabba, he was a masmin. He learned Torah all the time. He got 20 years extra because of that. Abai was also a second masmin. He got 40 years. And Rabba said, look, you, you trumped me, you know? You got another 20 years because of the chesed. Abai was born in here. Abai was born in here. I'm reading the Gemara. Abai does 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 the Gemara. I'm reading the Gemara. Yeah. Check it out. Maybe it's by line made a mistake. But Probably. but Probably. <laughs> Okay. We'll have to check it up and see. But in any event, so the point is like this. The point is that you don't lose out by doing chesed. Now, you have to know which chesed should you do. Right? Which chesed should you do? Right? You know, I heard from Shishan Pinkins. I heard this from him personally. He said, you know, I was coming to call one morning. And I got there late. So my Rosh calls him. Pit, uh, Shimshan, why are you late? He said, what do you mean? There was a there was a mother with 13 children who needed my help. Yeah? It was my way. <laughs> so, my son, that's the chesed that you have to do. person has to know. The, the smart person knows how to do a lot of chesed and also be also in power. And it's not a contradiction whatsoever. Right? And also, how not to get the Rosh call upset. It's not easy. Um, it's not easy, to, especially if you have a very inflexible um, Rosh Kol, like myself. But uh, look, I said the Shemu, so I'll have to understand it, right? Okay. So that's the thing. This is a very um, tender, uh, a very, very delicate subject, right? But the more Torah you learn, the more you should be able to chat. it, yeah? I saw a beautiful idea from David Feinstein, yeah? I actually saw it in Mishpacha magazine, quoted. He said, Rav David said, yeah, Rav David said, if you learned the sugya and you didn't become more sensitive to the needs of your soul and almanus, then you should learn sugya again. You missed it. It didn't affect you. It wasn't poil on you. Tere is poil on you. And that's why, you know, to go to college, you don't need memches kinyanim. You need memches elif dollar, you know. Um, you know, I, I, was in, I was in YU and, and now I ask somebody, tuition is $50,000 a year. So, memches kinyanim, you need memches elif dollar. Um, but Tere is poil on you to make you a more sensitive person, to make you a more kind person, to make you a more elevated person. Right? Rev Israel, uh, Rev Yitzhak Bloyzer said, if Darwin had seen my Rebbe, Rev Israel Slander, he couldn't have said man who comes from an ape. Yeah? Because it elevates a person to the highest mandrega. And the ability to appropriate your time and use it carefully, that's why it's not Stam that Sirius Omer comes right before, um, right before Kabbalah Zotera. It's and the Ron says it's because of the excitement going towards soda, but it's also if you want to be Makabal Torah, you have to know and understand how to deal with time. And that's probably the most as the Khasim Sofer said, that's it, five minutes. If you know what five minutes is, then you can really, really shtai. Because Baruch should give us siyata de Shmaya to use our time right and use our time well and to have greatest tatzlach in this. And Bizrat Hashem, we show them. So I was going to turn the, the shear off, but I want to finish with one point. And it came to my attention, you know, we're hoping to do, or we were considering, actually, I don't say, right. We're considering to do a campaign to buy an apartment down the street for four million shekels to, um, to make a basement for the call. And some people said, Rabbi Travis, said, I mean, I heard it. I didn't hear it. They didn't tell me. It was through the grapevines, you know. The grapevines, like, are over here. So she said, like, how does that work, you know? You're giving these schmoozen about Hasmada, but, like, probably there's no greater... Uh, Bittal Asmada, they're making a campaign, phone calls and this and that. And it's a point. It's definitely a point. Right? Uh, so I'll give you two sides. I'll give you two sides. First, I'll say side not to do it, yeah? which is a serious side. You know? During the Zman, to stop and to do a campaign, really. Side not to do it is to meet him, Even one minute 
He's saying even one one second. He said one second is one one room in a uh, one million shekels, right? So certainly a whole day and beforehand in the bittul Torah, that's a really good reason not to do a campaign. I remember in my uh, son's yeshiva, he was learning a certain place um, in uh, in the uh, north, south of Eretz Israel in the Tivot, They made a campaign, and afterwards they had to like have another campaign, like a Musa campaign, you know, because of the you know, because it's a, it's a, it's a very it's one of the interesting things about fundraising. You know, Rosh Hashivas and Rosh Hashikolim have to go like to America to pursue money and run after money. You know, all the time they're talking about run after Torah, and now like they have to actually pursue money. It's an interesting job. Right? So that's a very strong reason not to do a campaign. Yeah. The other side is is that Bitulo Zekumo, right? Bitulo Zekumo having base medrash strengthens the Torah and allows you to learn Torah better and can really. As Rav Alwik said, before you have a base medrash, you don't exist. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't have a base, if you don't have a base medrash, you don't exist. Yeah. So those are things. And as Rav Meisman, Rav Meisman, when he came and spoke last year, it was two years ago. When did he come? Last year or two years ago? I don't remember. It was two years ago. Two years ago. When he spoke before the campaign, he said, um, "Is that people who uh, pay, they should learn to give." That's what he said. You know. In all the kolim before before the uh, kolim became a um, how do you call it before it became a I don't want to say fan that's not a good word before it became like accepted part of Klai Israel kolim when it was like you know more all of all the Abraham they used to take a week two weeks off collecting you know for the kolim that's the way things always were but Baruch Hashem things changed and it's a good change it's good that Abraham shouldn't have one second of uh, batala run win it one hour. Thing. So those are two sudden, right? And like any shayla lacha, it's a sukiya, right? It needs to, you need, you need gemaras, you need rishonim, you need achronim, you need achra, right? You need, uh, you need a, uh, you know, you need poskim, you need poskim. I was by a Sternbach this Shabbos, and I asked him a certain shayla, and they threw me out. And a Sternbach said, no, don't throw him out. <laughs> and he gave like a really clear five second answer, achra, you know? So good that I was working on for 100 hours. Right? So you need Hashem for the you need Postkin. And um, so, Bazar Hashem will be Zorchi to get Akhra, we still have time. And um, the most important thing is people should be at ease with whatever is decided. It should be, nothing should be forced. And I say now, Barabim, whoever is not, uh, doesn't feel comfortable, is not interested, forget about it. They're totally putter from it. The the etzim halosa dvarim is only if people are interested. So one, and number two, the etzim there has to be a shikla das. Should it be done? Should it be done? When should it be done? How should it be done? All these things are shilat in halacha, and with Rosh Hashem will be zoyche to machriya them. Amen. Kain tei. Why he could have turned it off?